U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the Trump administration is ready to resume talks with communist North Korea at a moment's notice if the regime signaled a willingness to discuss denuclearization of the peninsula. Talks between our two nations, by the way, stalled following Trump's second meeting with Kim Jong-un in Vietnam. Meanwhile, testimonies from more than 600 North Korean defectors claim the government routinely carries out public executions often at riverbanks, markets, or in schools. The South Korea-based Transitional Justice Working Group released a map showing dozens of locations where North Koreans were reportedly publicly executed for crimes related to theft, violence, and politics. North Korea is one of the worst human rights violators in the world. Christians face persecution and severe punishment for worshipping outside state-controlled churches. Joining me is Tony Perkins, the newly appointed chair of the bipartisan U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. Tony, thank you so much for coming on the show and congratulations on your appointment. There are, as you know, several state-sanctioned churches uh, in North Korea, but these are just show churches, right? Yeah, they're nothing more than a facade. Look, North Korea is, is one of the worst countries in the world when it comes to religious freedom. I mean, look, repressive governments hate religious freedom. They're fearful of their people having the ability to express their faith uh, because th there is no moral foundation for a repressive government and so they're very concerned about religious freedom and the, the tyranny the uh, repression that we see in north korea is again it's unparalleled what price does a north korean pay uh, for following jesus christ well we know that there are um, camps uh, concentration camps if you will in North Korea, where political prisoners, Christians, we know, you know, best estimates, a very closed country, but maybe 50,000 of them are Christians. They are singled out for harsh treatment, for torture, forced uh, hard labor. Uh, and there is a, in, in North Korea, it's more of a, a worship of the, the ruling family. And so no religion of any sort is tolerated. And it's, it's a very repressive regime. And hopeful that the engagement by this administration, which is all in when it comes to religious freedom around the globe, that by engaging in these conversations and negotiations with North Korea, that possibly uh, the door might be opened. Uh, the North Korean people clearly uh, have been locked away from the rest of the world. But if they get a glimpse of what true freedom is like, maybe maybe we could see freedom coming to North Korea in the future. Yeah, Tony, talk to that very specific point. As you know, talks between our two countries have so far focused on trade and denuclearization. Why isn't human rights and religious freedom a part of those discussions? Well, I actually think they have been. Uh, it's not been publicized much, but I know that uh, in the first meeting the president had that those, those issues did come up, obviously, at the top is the denuclearization of the peninsula. That's the top priority. But those other issues uh, have factored in uh, to the conversation. As I mentioned, you are the new chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. Uh, Tony, what's going to be your focus during your tenure? Well, there is a lot happening around the world. We're seeing un unprecedented levels of persecution of people of faith, Christians being a, a, a probably the largest uh, religious group that is being persecuted. But, you know, we look at China. We have the, the, the Uyghur Muslims that are being put into concentration camps, somewhere between 80, uh, 800,000 to 2 million of them. Uh, we see the Middle East being very unsettled right now. But here's the good news, George. What we're seeing happen, and because of the focus of this administration, many countries are paying attention now to religious freedom, or at least a, the freedom of worship in their country. So I'm engaging with leaders at the highest levels all around the world, uh, in moving them forward toward recognizing that fundamental human right of religious freedom, meaning the ability to, to worship as you please, not to worship, to change your religion. That's a fundamental right of every human being. And this administration, this commission is advancing that around the world. Are there any areas of the world uh, that you hope during your time uh, on, on, as chair to draw attention to? Well, I'm very concerned about what's happening in Nigeria. Uh, that country, I think, could be another Rwanda, where you have genocide, where, the, where you have right now 
violence taking place between Muslims and Christians. And in fact, I've adopted as a prisoner of conscious, uh, conscience um, Leah Sarabu, who was a 15 year old girl who was uh, kidnapped by Boko Haram and being held as a prisoner. And so I hope to bring greater attention to what's happening in Nigeria as well. Okay, terrific. We'll have to leave it there. Tony, thank you so much and congratulations on the new position. Thank you very much.